Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. As Jesus hung on the cross, he uttered seven last words of great meaning to those who contemplate his passion and death. For centuries, the seven last words have been built into various forms of devotion for the consideration and consolation of the Christian people. English Catholics of the late Middle Ages were especially devoted to this pious exercise and passed it on in latter-day prayer books. As we reflect on Christ's sacrifice this Good Friday, the seven last words give us powerful insight into his thoughts as he took all the sins of mankind upon himself. With these words, he forgives his enemies, forgives the penitent thief, cries out to God and declares the end of his earthly life. May this brief reflection guide you in your observance of Good Friday. Today, Good Friday, the resurrection of our Lord Parish invites you to meditate on the seven last words in the light of stewardship. With the help of our church leaders from the different commissions and councils, we may be able to remember Christ's call for us to be stewards. Just Jesus was speaking to us in his final hours. In his seven last words, Jesus shows us how he has fulfilled his saving mission and sends us forth to follow in his footsteps to be stewards of God's creation, of our own family and community, of God's rewards and material gifts to us, and of the gift of the Eucharist to our faith. We welcome you all to this reflection on the seven last words of our Lord Jesus with the help of Teatro Pagsibol in their tableau. May we be able to place ourselves in a prayerful disposition and meditate. And the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we gather as your people, entrusted with the precious gift of faith. We recognize this great dignity and honor to be accorded with this title, Steward. But many times we have failed to see what it means to be a steward. May these our reflections and sharings in these seven last words of your Son from the cross challenge each and every one of us, challenge the very core of our Christian identity to be faithful and worthy stewards of the precious gift of faith, of life, of all the talents and graces that you have showered upon us the precious gift of time, talents, and treasures, which we are called and challenged and moved to share and make use of all, wise use of it all for the greater glory of your name and the glorification of your kingdom and the sanctification of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, allow me to share a portion of the pastoral statement of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines regarding stewardship. This was uh, penned and this was sent throughout our country to the different dioceses and parishes as we were celebrating during at the height of the pandemic 
the 500th year of our Christianization. As each one of has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied graces. From the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 4, verse 10. Dear people of God, we mark this year the 500th year of the coming to our shores of the Christian faith. Our commemoration of the event is an acknowledgement of this immense gift to our people and to our land. We did not only receive the faith, but also allowed it to take root and grow in our Filipino culture throughout these years. With this gift of faith, we have become God's people, partakers of divine mysteries. We are grateful to God for this immeasurable gift. We are not, however, the ultimate owners of this special gift. We are stewards, katiwala, of God's gifts. As mentioned in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7, is there anything that we did not receive as gift? Each gift we receive is meant to be shared to one another. And so, we are gifted to give. We must share the faith. Every gift is a responsibility. We recognize every gift, nurture it, generously share it with others, and gratefully return it with increase to the Lord. This is the meaning of the spirituality of stewardship. After 500 years of striving to live the Christian faith more fully, we heighten consciousness of our identity as stewards. We are stewards of life, talent, time, and material resources. These gifts are given to us for service that we may become channels of God's providence to one another. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures remind us as each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. We are certainly blessed not only when we receive, but especially when we give. God calls us to serve one another more generously, especially our poor brothers and sisters. The Lord Jesus made his own the prophecy of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. We then take the banner of preferential love for the poor. On this, Pope Francis tells us, our preferential option for the poor must mainly translate into a privileged and preferential religious care. It is in this light that we, as God's people, gather this afternoon not only to reflect individually on the seven last words of Jesus, but to, be, to benefit from the actual sharing and experiences of our brothers and sisters, whom I do believe will touch the very core of our identity as God's disciples, as stewards of the precious gift of faith.
We are familiar with the Lent, with Lent being a season of repentance. In fact, we hear repent and believe in the gospel. As we receive ashes on our foreheads during Lent, we seek forgiveness, but how often do we offer it? Sometimes in our relationships with others, the only thing more difficult than humbling ourselves to ask forgiveness is to truly grant it, to fully forgive, to not let resentment continue to linger inside of us. Our first reflection to be given by the steward of Commission on Social Services to Human Promotion focuses on stewardship of God's creation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved the others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Raul Morelos Castillo. As I stand before you now, I feel immense gratitude towards God. Despite my flaws and many sins, He has never given up on me. It's become clear to me that God is my unwavering companion, akin to the hound from heaven. For the first 40 plus years of my life, I led a nominal Catholic existence. Occasionally, I attended Mass during Christmas, weddings and wakes, but only when convenient. My relationship with God remained distant. I lacked a personal connection. On Sundays, my parents encouraged me to join them at Mass. Yet I often found excuses not to go. Still, I'd ask them to include me in their prayers. I steered my life's journey from the driver's seat during those years. God seemed invisible and unreachable to me at that time. 
Trials and tribulations felt senseless, almost like punishments for my sins. My spiritual life was nearly non-existent, except for desperate moments of prayer, though I struggled to listen genuinely. My prayers became a mere litany of requests. My family faced a series of misfortunes during this period, and I grappled with how to cope. I sometimes wondered if God had more important matters to attend to than my problems. My parents, sister, and brother-in-law were the Ligayan ng Panginoon Covenanted community members. Occasionally, I accompanied them to their prayer meetings, but eventually, I stopped attending. Years later, an old friend from my grade school days, a fellow Covenanted member of the LNP, invited me to join the introductory module of LNP. Although I barely completed the seminar, something tugged at me. Instead of wanting to join the Ligayan ng Panginoon community, I felt drawn to attend Mass at the resurrection of our Lord Parish. Part of me resisted ROLP due to rumors of parishioners' gossip. But whenever I read the LNP pledge, thoughts of serving at ROLP persisted. I finally yielded to the call. I began attending early morning masses, sometimes arriving late, but constantly receiving communion. In 2004, this inexplicable need to attend mass and partake in communion became a daily practice. In July 2005, I joined the Parish Renewal Experience, or PREX, the Class 21. It was a turning point in my life. I also became a member of the PREX Praise Ministry, singing praises alongside other batchmates during subsequent PREX classes. Later, I was invited to join the Parish Pastoral Council and I volunteered to assist in the developing communities group. Many years later, after the Diocesan Pastoral Assembly, the Commission on Service to Human Promotion was formed, and several years ago, I agreed to become its steward. Today, one of the main thrusts of the COSHP, ROLP, is caring for our common home, and its members are called stewards of creation. Allow me to cite the duties and responsibilities of a steward of creation. In a world facing environmental challenges, stewardship takes center stage. A steward of creation is entrusted with caring for the earth and its resources. This role goes beyond mere ownership. It involves a sacred duty to protect, preserve, and nurture our common home. Let us explore the essential responsibilities of our steward of creation. There are six. One is care for the environment, two, responsible consumption, three, advocacy and education, four, ethical treatment of animals, five, spiritual connection, and the sixth, social justice. Allow me to cite a few main points. For number one, care for the environment. A steward's primary duty is to care for the environment, which involves one, conservation which is using resources wisely, minimizing waste, and promoting 
sustainable practices. The second is biodiversity preservation, protecting ecosystems, flora and fauna from extinction. Third is pollution control, reducing pollution and advocating for clean air, water, and soil. The second is responsible consumption. We, all of us as stewards, must be mindful consumers to reduce, that is to minimize consumption by choosing quality over quantity. Reuse, repurpose items whenever possible. Recycle, properly dispose of materials to reduce landfill waste. The third is advocacy and education. Us towards have a responsibility to firstly advocate, to raise awareness about environmental issues, to lobby for policies, and support conservation efforts. Another is to educate, to teach others about sustainable practices, ecological balance, and the interconnectedness of all life. The fourth is ethical treatment of animals. Stewards should recognize that animals, all animals, are part of creation. So we should have compassion to treat animals with kindness, avoiding cruelty and exploitation. Should involve ourselves in wildlife protection to support conservation programs and habitat preservation. The fifth is spiritual connection. Stewardship is rooted in spirituality. Gratitude. We should recognize creation as a gift from God, expressing gratitude through reverence and prayer to pray for wisdom, guidance, and strength to fulfill stewardship responsibilities. The sixth, and not the, la not the least, is social justice. We stewards consider the impact on humanity, focusing on points like equity to advocate for fair distribution of resources, ensuring no one suffers from environmental degradation. The other is solidarity. To stand in solidarity with the poor and marginalized who bear the brunt of ecological crisis. In conclusion, being a steward of creation is not passive. It requires intentional action. As Pope Francis reminds us in Laudato Si, we are called to protect our common home, recognizing that our choices affect the earth and its inhabitants. Let us embrace our stewardship responsibilities with reverence, love, and a commitment to leave a healthier planet for future generations. In closing, I'd like to offer this prayer for sharing. Give us your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, so that this forgiveness will flow, us, flow through us to others, those we live with every day, those who have especially wronged, those we are tempted to fear or hate, and especially for the sins we committed against your creation. In the name of Jesus, who prayed for us, amen.
the good thief known as Saint Dismas shows us the power of conversion along with its reward. A convicted thief, Saint Dismas, presumably did not lead the most holy life. Yet, as he hung alongside Jesus, his eyes were opened to the presence of God. With his final dying breath, he proclaimed Jesus as Lord of all creation. Jesus recognized his acts of faith and affirms to Saint Dismas that he will join him in heaven. The second reflection will be coming from the steward of the Commission on Youth. Here is the second word. Today, you will be with me in paradise. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of the criminals who hung their heard insults at him, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Anne Bernadette L. Ferrer. My designation in ROLP, I am the Commission on Youth Steward. And my reflection team is all about stewardship reward. I am third among four siblings. I am the younger daughter in the family. I am living at the Larama BF Homes. My family is not financially rich. My father is a family driver and my mother is a plain housewife. I'm the Commission on Youth Steward of the Resurrection of Our Lord Parish, former Legion of Mary Secretary, Ministry of Gospel, Theater and Culture, Teatro Pagsibol Assistant Director, and Production Staff. In Vicariate level, I am a former Assistant Secretary of the Vicariate of San Antonio de Padua, and also one of the content creators of the Vicoy FB page. Everybody calls me Ate Badet, who's very tahimik and mahiyain, yet still one of the core team that continuously and strongly support her fellow youth, most especially in organizing activities in the parish, gathering the youth, and guiding my fellow youth in their church service. My road to being a commission and youth steward began exactly one year ago today. 
Holy Week season marks a very special place of my heart as it is the first ever challenging activity I've handled as the new steward. But before that, allow me to share to all of you my journey from a simple church servant to being a koi steward. This began when I was eight years old. It all started with catechism. My mother was the one who persuaded me and my two elder sisters to join Mumunting Angel ng Panginoon Foundation, or later known as Angels of Hope. It was held every Saturday morning at the BF Home Space One Gym. This is when I established my spiritual foundation wherein I met my Mumunting Angel catechist, Tita Loni Tablan, Tita Christy, Tita Lina Gidote, and my college sponsor, Tita Lorna Pebenito. I also attended catechism immersion in our community, which is held every Sunday morning by missionary sisters headed by Sister Melanie. This engagement made me and my sisters to be invited to join the Legion of Mary under Ina ng Mailika Presidium. As a member, I be able to have a different yet meaningful spiritual experiences. This period started my interest to enter the ministry of junior lectors and commentators and psalmists. Others had no idea that I am a shy type person who is reluctant to socialize and talk in public. However, because of the Legion of Mary, uh, they needed a youth representative who will read the prayers of the faithful during children's mass. So I accepted the invitation and decided to serve, expecting that this is my first and last time as a junior lector, not until they want me to serve for the next Sunday, until they want me to stay for another week, till another youth volunteer can take my position. But trusting in God's plan, I went through JLCP basic formation and serve as a qualified junior lector until 2018, then right after I was being promoted and transferred to senior lector in MLCP. I've been a lector for 10 years and counting. Growing up in such an environment ignited my passion and appreciation of being a church servant. Perhaps, the dedication for continuously pursuing church activities developed through the years. I got being invited to join the Commission on Youth core team under Ati Jamie Pantaleon leadership and elected as her assistant steward for almost five years. Those years with Ati Jamie and the team was one of the amazing experience I ever had Enrolled. I got new friends, practice socializing to people, and build network that really shapes who I am today. In 2023, I was elected as the new Commission on Youth Steward. It was a tough decision when I accepted this role as I am a college graduating student with hectic schedules, family issues and problems that weakens me, and difficulty in many ways. In this season of my life, I feel like I don't have spare time to give to church. I just wanted to let go this opportunity to be able to focus on, on the life my family told me to be, and, just, and that is to focus at my studies only and not joining to church activities. In one year serving the youth and the parish community, it wasn't that easy. I dealt different challenges such, such as socializing to different group dynamics, leadership skills, spiritual guidance, youth engagement, 
and participation, budget management, and balancing commitments. This difficulty teaches me to humbly accept my imperfections and be open to criticism. My urge to help the youth directed me to say yes to God's calling. I accepted my new designation while I am still on the verge of anxiety and numerous what-ifs. Am I too young for this role? What if people will expect too much? What can I offer to the youth? I am just a student who can provide financially on her own. How can we contribute to the parish community? Accepting stewardship life changed my life. I created countless of good memories with the youth. I became an ate mother at my young age. I became a mediator, a spokesperson, messenger, sister, tutor, listener, and their ate badet nasasamaan sila when they are feeling neglected by the society or the parish community. Although it's very stressful, yet it is fulfilling. As time passes by, I was be able to embrace this journey in serving the youth and bringing them to Christ. I have to trust God's providence. I am not a type of person who's good at trusting. I'm good at saying, I trust God. As I, con as I contemplate the rewards that I got, I am blessed to share to all of you that I finished my study and finally graduated in college as magna cum laude at Rizal Technological University, taking Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in Human Resource Development Management. I also got a decent job in a government-owned corporation. I can now provide for my family and give them comfortable life. Those sleepless and loneliness turns out to be part of the process of making me brave. I could not have made my life happen the way it has happened on my own. God's hand was there. For me, accepting this role is a reward, not a burden. Even though I doubted my capabilities, it's clearer, it's clearer now that I am chosen to this role. My desire and God's desire have met, and that is to make a difference and to show to people that ang kabataan ay hindi basta-basta, kabataan lang. My dedication to become a vessel of God and lead my fellow youth to God will be limitless. I sincerely believe that the Holy Spirit always guided me in my journey in the parish life. I am a living proof how God delivered His stewardship reward. I can say with confidence that if you are called by Him, you will go above and beyond what you thought you could do. I did my faith grow and it become vibrant. I became interested in a well-organized COI activity and volunteered to assist in its preparation. I have public anxiety but it doesn't stop me from joining the theater group because I trust God to help me through the process. I also care about other youth outside at Rolf neighboring areas, therefore I assist in recruiting and inviting new members. I wish to grow spiritually. That is why I became a youth steward where we seek to raise the self-esteem of young people. I try my hardest to be God's shepherd in guiding the youth in order to, to promote harmony and unity. My stewardship life has shaped me into the person I am today. 
I am not claiming it was simple. It was exhausting to the point that you wanted to give up, especially when you felt alone. But it was all worth it since God will take care of the rest. He will shower you with more benefits than you require and you deserve. And you will have plenty to give to any good work you undertake, as well as to share with others. But allow me to tell you about the wonders of being a church steward. You're not on your own. There will always be someone to accompany you. All you have to do is have faith in Him. Have believed in yourself. I'm grateful to have discovered a group of people who believe in me and support me. I did not send it here by accident. It was all planned by God. He surrounds me with the perfect group of people who will walk alongside me on my path to a colorful faith, encouraging me to persevere and serve as much as I can. Yes, a serving can be difficult or exhausting, but it can also be rewarding. To conclude my thoughts, I would advise all of you and my fellow youth to pray and listen to your hearts and to continue bargaining with God when they are at their lowest points. Surrender your worries and put your trust in God's might because whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Prayer Lord Jesus, remember us, we pray, remember us now, today, and remember us when you come into the fullness of your kingdom. Thank you for the encouragement of your response to the thief on the cross, the promise of paradise, the promise of your presence, that we will be with you forever, that with you there is no forgetting. Amen.
in his most agonizing moments. Jesus gives all of us, as his disciples, the gift of his mother. He entrusts us to each other. We can turn to Mary with confidence, knowing that she loves us as a mother and wants nothing more for us than to remain close to her son. We can be assured of her prayers for us and find comfort in her heart, a heart completely full of love for Jesus. The third reflection will be given by the steward of the Commission on Family. The third word, woman. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are Ike and Carmen Bontilla, the steward for the Commission on Family. Today, Carmen and I want to take you to a profound journey, drawing inspiration from, from the poignant words spoken by Jesus Christ from the cross. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold thy mother. In these words, uttered amidst agony and suffering, Jesus epitomized the essence of familial care and responsibility. He entrusted his beloved mother, Mary, to the care of his beloved disciple, John, symbolizing the importance of familial bonds and the duty of care within family. As we reflect on these words, let us delve deeper into the timeless lessons they offer on the care of our own families in today's world. Right now, the most threatened and shaken institution is the family. It is attacked from all sides by the culture and mindset that disregards God's beautiful design and plan for mankind. We would like to highlight three lessons of Jesus on the value of family as they relate to our own life. The first lesson can be found in how Jesus' words highlight the significance of honoring and caring for our parents and loved ones. 
In entrusting Mary to John, Jesus exemplified the importance of fulfilling familial duties even in the face of adversity. It serves as a reminder for us to cherish and support our family members, especially in times of need. Carmen and I took care of our parents until their very old age. Blessed with good jobs and financial opportunities, we were also the run two of our siblings and relatives when they needed support. While material help at the time was the main need, empathy, understanding, and guiding care we provided enabled our family to grow to what they are now. This year, on our 54th year of marriage, we have been blessed with two daughters, two gra 10 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. In this growing family, we continue to extend our love and care with utmost patience, empathy, and service. We always extend our love and care with utmost patience, empathy, and service. We always share God's material and spiritual blessings with one another, whether in cooking and sharing Sunday lunch or ensuring strong bonding and loving relationships. What we have started as a couple 50 years ago has now extended to the two generations of families in our clan. We celebrate every individual special day and events together, from school and work achievements to birthdays and anniversaries. We travel every now and then engage in sport activities regularly, and go to social and charitable activities together, making sure that no one is ever left out. Through all these activities and shared moments, we deepen our familiar, familiar relationships with each other and ensure that these traditions and values are also passed on to the next generations. The second lesson is how Jesus' action demonstrates the universal nature of family by extending his familial bond beyond those related by blood. In doing so, he emphasized the value of building strong, supporting relationship within our broader community treating others with compassion and empathy as if they were our own kin. This brings us to the role we play as the steward of the Commission on the Family of the Resurrection of Our Lord Parish. COF serves and extends the love and grace of God to the greater role community through its seven ministries. The Ministry on Special Children and PWD, Migrant Workers and Their Family, the Single or Solo Parent Ministry, the Ministry on Elderly and Grandparents, the Ministry on Pre and Post Cana, the Ministry on Widows and Widowers, and the Ministry on pastoral and spiritual counseling. All these ministries serve to strengthen the families that belong to the community of the resurrection of our Lord Parish. The pre cana ministry has a special spot in our hearts as we, Carmen and I, share the experience, wisdom, and thoughts to marrying couples so that they too may embrace the values 
and the virtues of the Christian family at the beginning of their married life. Every pre-Cana or marriage preparation program seminar we undertake for marrying couples is a God-given opportunity to plant a seed for a good family life. Our unique and interesting work in the COF enables us to help strengthen the family at every level of struggles they are in through the seven ministries that we lead and guide. The third and final lesson is how Jesus underscores the importance of em empathy and compassion within the family. In his final moments, Jesus expressed concern for both his mother's well-being and his disciples' welfare. This selfless act of care highlights the need I am a living testament of the power of selfless care, love, and prayers. When I survived a near-death situation at the beginning of the COVID pandemic in 2020. On top of the tremendous medical care I received, the relentless prayers, support, and care of my family, friends, and community allowed me to surpass what would have been a fatal incident. I praise God for the gift of loving relationships that graced me and my entire life. Jesus' example challenges us to break down societal barriers and stereotypes that often divide families. Regardless of our differences, Jesus teaches us to embrace each other with love and acceptance, recognizing the inherent dig dignity and worth of every individual. In today's fast-paced world, where familial bonds are sometimes neglected amidst the hustle and bustle of everyday life, we should prioritize the care and well-being of our families. Mental health, which is a major concern, especially among the youth, finds its root in neglect, lack of care, empathy, and understanding. We recall the time when our grandson coming from work at night caused the total wreck of their brand new car when he dozed off driving at Elizalde Street, which happens to be just a few blocks from our residence. His parents and siblings never showed any contempt nor anger over the incident. Instead, empathy, compassion, and concern for his well-being was everyone's focus amidst the harrowing experience. We realized Finger pointing and condemnation would only lead to deep mental anguish that can be embedded in the subconsciousness of our remorseful grandson. This illustrated the constant presence of care and love in our family for which you are very proud of. Whether it's through simple acts of kindness, spending quality time together, or offering a listening ear, let us strive to emulate Jesus' example of selfless love and care within our families. As we meditate on the profound significance of Jesus' last words, let us recommit ourselves to building strong, nurturing families where love, compassion, and empathy reign supreme. In doing so, we not only honor the legacy of Jesus, his teaching, but also create a world where every family member feels seen, seen heard, heard, and cherished. Thank you. May God be praised. Prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for the good work 
that Jesus was performing even on the cross, creating a new community of love, the church, a community bound together by the saving blood of Jesus, transcending all the barriers of national boundaries, of race, of culture, of language, one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. May we be true to Jesus' good work on the cross, loving and caring for one another in your church, whoever the brother or sister in Christ may be. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus, who offers us the promise of living waters through the Holy Spirit, is dry, parched, empty. We can all relate to the feeling of both physical thirst and inner emptiness. The fourth reflection will be given by the steward of the Commission on BEC and New Evangelization. Brothers and sisters, the fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at the three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sister Margot, the steward of the Commission on BEZ, Animation and New Evangelization. June 17, 2017 was a terrible nightmare. I had a fever, terrible back pains, muscle pains, headache, and unexplainable pain all over my body, with from feet to breast covered with reddish, swollen skin like lechon. The sisters rushed me to the hospital at 9.45 p.m. I was already with zero potassium. Along the way, I could only hear people trying to encourage me to fight. And while saying, Wag ka matulog, malapit na. Malapit na tayo marago. Kayanin mo. Magdasal ka. I could hear blowing of horns everywhere. I couldn't feel my body. Ramdam ko lang na para akong lumulutang. Feeling ko sobrang tagal ng oras at ang layo-layo ng hospital. I arrived at the emergency room sa hospital exactly 11.10 p.m. Buti na lang pagdating doon, may, naka, may nakabang na doktor sa pagdating ko. Nang nalaman ko na nasa hospital ako, ramdam ko na lahat na ng takot. I kept on praying to God. Lord, please huwag mo kong pabayaan. After that, I couldn't go beyond my strength. It's no more. Nakatulog ako, sa aking, nakatulog ako at sa aking pagtulog, doon nakasama kong naglalakbay sa panaginip ang aking lola na kung saan nakaratay din sa hospital. We're both trying to survive but with different pain and sufferings. 
There in my dreams, together with her, there is no single pain. I was too well and healthy. Tanaw ko sa panaginip ko ang mga ngiti ng lolo ko. We're both happy and at peace. But suddenly, I could hear voices around me, as if talking to me. I wanted to respond, but I don't know why I couldn't do it. Finally, I felt quite conscious about what was whole happening around me. Pero, I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't move my body. I couldn't talk and say. I could hear them. Why I couldn't respond? Hindi ko maintindihan yun. Until I realized what was my situation. I wanted to fight and make a single respond with a little movement. But it was a great struggle for me. There I felt being abandoned. Sabi ko, Bakit Lord? Bakit mo ko pinabayaan? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I was afraid to die. I knew that I need confession. My soul was not ready. I was not ready. Lord, I am not ready. So it came after 28 hours. I could see people around. I could move my fingers and to toes. I could feel my body. I could finally say I am awake. 20 hour, 28 hours of sleep was not a joke nor a peaceful rest. It was a sleep of just struggling my life to live. Then I found out that I was actually in the massive care unit with a lot of apparatus all over my body. I was diagnosed with vasculitis, a rare disease that few patients could possibly survive. Right after I woke up, I asked for a priest. I wish I now wanted to confess my sins and receive my Lord in the Eucharist. And as far as Father Lambert arrived, he immediately anointed me. Then I prayed, Lord, sorry, I doubt you. Akala ko pinabayaan mo na ako. Please forgive me. Please heal me. After Father Lambert anointed me, he clearly said, Hindi ka pa mamamatay. Marami ka pang gagawin. So his words came true after a year and up to the present moment. I did and still doing a lot of things that I couldn't imagine that I was able to do it. There I have discovered that I can still do more beyond my expectations. I was not expecting to become an instrument of creating God's community toward achieving the goal of communion in a very extraordinary simple way. The first time I was given the respons this responsibility, sabi ko parang hindi ko kaya. Kasi wala akong experience kung paano bumuo ng community na kahit isa wala kang kakilala. That was the time na parang feeling ko ang hirap gawin. Parang ang hirap gawin lahat at intindihin. Maraming pagkakataon na sukong-suko na ako. And it was pandemic. Communications were brought online. And at the same time, I was a college full-load student. Monday to Saturday, pasok ko sa school, tapos gabi na ang uwian ko lagi. Hindi ko na maintindihan kung tama pa ba lahat kasi walang wala na ako sa prayer life. Para na akong naging isang ordinary, secular person. But as the time went by, little by little, God allows me to discover the true meaning behind of all those experiences. I really thought God has forsaken me again. And yet I realized He was there all the time. Many times in my life, I have been selfish. Kaya siguro naramdaman ko na para akong pinabayaan. But in all, it is only a matter of seeing the presence of God in all things and in everywhere. 
the BEC where I am now is really a manifestation of how God works in me. I'm not claiming it as my effort, but on how God used me as an ordinary person and most of all as a religious consecrated to evangelize, not only by works, but most of all with my life. Here, I ultimately experience kung paano gumalaw ang Diyos sa kabila ng mga pagdududa at paghihirap. Then I realize why God torments, why God allows torments and pains to happen in life. Para mas lalong tumibay ako sa anumang pagdadaanan. Yung karanasan ko last 2017 made it clear today na marami pa talaga akong gagawin. At isa na nga dito yung BEC kung saan maraming bagay at karanasan nagpatibay sa akin, lalong-lalo na sa buhay spiritual na meron ako. The works in evangelizing these people who through the mercy of God allows me to see the best in me and I look forward for more. This is how time, treasure, and talent comes to reality in my life. Using the time that God has entrusted to me, ang pagbuo ng pamayanan ay mahirap kong isipin. Naakalain mong parang imposible, lalo na kung titingin lamang ako sa, ta sa tanging alam na meron ako. I began with nine people in Be Easy. Hindi ko sila kilala at kung anong klaseng buhay, buhay meron sila. The fact that I am sure that they are simple people who have the willingness to listen. I was young. They are most likely like my mothers. But the way they respect and value my role to them, it helps me a lot to earn humility and simplicity. I went through a lot on how to make this community na mag mas maging marami at mag-improve. At least mahikayat pa yung iba to come and share their life with the gospel. Maraming rejections and judgments. But still the eagerness to go and proclaim the goodness is more important. Yun yung pumasok sa isip ko at naging part ng motivation ko. Ginamit ko yung pagiging Franciscan ko. It's a perfect joy as we call it. But as time went by, Truly, everything happens for a reason, and there's a perfect time. Sumubok ako magsimula sa formation para sa mga developing communities. The struggle was there to invite them, and it happened that BEZ grow in number. At kalaunan, hindi naging madali to let them stay and be an active member. But I took it as a credit to give in each of them a treasure to remember. At least, pe people who became part of them are now in the church serving in different ministries and organizations. And it is how the talents are being used by God through my ordinary efforts. God made it happen and is making it more effective. One more important thing I've learned about being a steward of commission on BEC and new evangelization of the resurrection of our Lord Parish, that it is not a matter of being a leader, but having a sense of responsibility to serve with love and humility as God's instrument in taking care of what has entrusted upon me. Siyang nagbigay Marapat lamang na ibalik na may papurit pa sa salamat sa kanyang walang hanggang awa at pagmamahal. What a wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, that Jesus would take our place on the cross, experiencing the curse, the abandonment, the God-forsakenness, warranted by our sins. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus experienced God's forsakenness for us so that we will never be forsaken by God. 
but will always enjoy God's nearness and blessing. In the name of our precious Redeemer, Amen. <laughs> Utter humanity. When God feels far off and distant, or when we struggle to feel connected to Jesus, these words can help remind us of how of just how human Jesus was. Have we not all felt forsaken at times? The fifth reflection will be given by the steward of the Commission on Liturgy and Popular Religiosity. The fifth word, I thirst. Sabi nila, the best talaga ang childhood memories. Free to roam around, play to your heart's content, pure joy and innocence. Free from all complexities of life. Allow me to share what my childhood memories were. I was not free to roam around with my siblings. We can play from one to sawa, at nababalot kami sa takot at pag-aalinlangan. I grew up in an unstable environment where peace and order seem impossible. Indeed, my hometown, Basilan, is a beauty to behold with the vastness of its natural resources, but with the security situation where constant fighting between military forces and rebels marred my ideal childhood. Our house was bombed twice. We were forced to sleep in foxholes for safety. Curfew was at 5 p.m. Schools were closed because we were no longer allowed to leave the safety of our homes and constant evacuation to safer grounds. We were never spared from all these tragic events. Trial after trial dawned on my family. My only brother was kidnapped in year 1984 and still remained missing up to now. My two nephews and niece were also victims of bombing, wherein my niece has to undergo reconstructive surgery. My heart was constantly crying for peace. I thirst for peace. My grandparents and parents were the pillar of our Catholic faith. At 6 p.m. in the evening was prayer time for all of us. My Lola would gather all her apos for the Angelus and recitation of the Holy Rosary in Latin or in Ilonggo, na nakaluhod ang lahat 
Bawal ang nakaupo. Otherwise, didilatan ka ni Lola na may hawak na stick. May her soul rest in peace. Attending Mass was like attending a banquet. We were required to wear our decent dress. My mom would constantly remind us that we have to dress up as a sign of our respect and reverence for the place of worship. During those turbulent times, the family had experienced my mom never missed attending her daily mass. Ako ang parating bitbit niya sa simbahan and she would always remind me to pray the rosary and attend the mass as frequent as I can. Remember that all we have experienced in life will come to pass. This pain will come to pass, man. Just trust in God's mercy and be constant in your prayer life. I left my hometown in year 1987 for Manila to pursue the career path I have chosen. It was in year 1994 that I transferred residence in Las Piñas City. Although I attended Mass every Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation, observed all days of fast and abstinence, I never participated in the mission of the Church as a baptized and active Catholic. I was engrossed with my work due to overwhelming responsibilities given to me. I would always, it would always be work, work, and more work for me. I made friends with some of the church workers in the community, and they would invite me to join church activities and other important celebrations in the parish. Most of the time, I would respond to their invitation. I will try po, or next time na lang, or busy pa po ako sa work. Then, I met Tito June, the driver of my daughter's school bus, an active church worker, a lay minister, and member of the music ministry. Tito June invited me to join Batch 13 Prex. As usual, my answer is, I'll try po. I totally forgot the Prex invitation. On my way home that Friday night, while driving along Padre Diego Serra Avenue, I felt the steering wheel of my car turned a little bit to the right, and I found myself in the parish ground of St. Joseph Church, the bamboo organ. Aba nakita ako ni Tito June, pakaway-kaway sa akin at tuwang-tuwa talaga siya as if telling me to hurry a bit. Ang tanong ko, bakit po? Ay naku sis, ngayon ang schedule ng prex ninyo. Kanina pa ako naghihintay sa'yo. Salamat sa pagtugon. Umaten ka lang at makinig. At first, I felt I was just mere spectator. But towards the middle of the session, I was deeply drawn, and a real realization came into my being that God is calling me to serve. Yes, vast is His vineyard, but workers are few. I started then to commit and dedicated myself to my choice of ministry, the ministry of lectors and commentators. But I was thirsting for more plunging deeper into my commitment to my God. I joined BEC, or the Munting Christianong Kapit Bahayan, and we were able to organize three BECs. It was truly enriching, humbling, and spiritually uplifting experience for me. My life's journey as a steward reminds me that God wants me to advance the church mission to be a living witness of God's generosity. God called me when my life was 100% focused on my work and my family. 
Saan naman ako sa buhay mo, man? I thirst for you, man. When I responded to that call, there was no turning back. Now, with all the grace and generosity of God in directing and leading me, I was tasked to be a steward of CLPR. May my God help me to be good and faithful steward of all time, talent, and treasure in the service of others until the end. I am Ann Aldimita, steward of commission on liturgy and popular religiosity. O oh God, it breaks my heart to think the suffering and torment that Jesus went through on the cross. Jesus, the living water, suffering thirst for us. Jesus, the righteous one, suffering the pangs of hell for us. May we on this day again and again drink deeply from the well of living water that began to flow when Jesus' blood was shed and his body was broken so that our lives may be refreshed even unto life eternal. Amen. While he hung on the cross, Jesus, word made flesh, had accompanied everything, had accomplished 
everything he needed to. Having taken the full weight of humanity's sins, he's given himself fully. He achieved the end for which he was sent. Jesus has triumphed. His work is complete. These words are his earthly farewell. The sixth reflection will be given by a member of the Commission on Catechesis and Religious Education. The sixth word, it is finished. Gospel reading from according to St. John. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soak a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop, hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. The Gospel of the Lord. I am Sonia Veras. A member, a catechist, a catechist under Comcare, a member of Legion of Mary, member of the, of the Bible Apostolate, and of course, a spiritual counselor to all those to whom God sent me. When I was requested by our Comcare steward, Sister Benichua, to take part in the seven last words of our Lord Jesus Christ, Immediately, I prayed to God and said, My past, my present are all yours. You alone accomplished them in me. How can I express it without robbing you of the glory? Please, my Lord, accomplish this task in me. When Jesus said the sixth last word, It is finished. For me, he meant he has now exhausted himself completely. He has nothing left. His love for man has reached its peak. What then should mankind give him in return? What thanksgiving shall we not render? What gratitude shall be not for him? What can I offer to Jesus to somehow return back the love and mercy that he continuously poured in me. The sixth last word brought me back to my past and present life and made me ponder on what God wants from me henceforth. To give you a glimpse of my life, let me narrate some important facts of my past. I came from a poor and broken family of five siblings, two from the first husband of my mother, who together with her family were executed during the Japanese war, and the three younger, younger ones from her second partner. The gap in our ages and that of our half-sister and brother was more than 10 years. My mother, although unlettered, managed to develop skills in sewing dresses and other apparels. This was the bread and butter of our family. Since there is nothing good that I can say about my father, out of love for God, I would rather not speak a single word on him. After several years of heart-filled life with my father, my mom mastered the courage to separate from him, although still pregnant with her third child. I was only two years old then. Hence, as I grew up, 
I didn't have a memory of how my father looks like. The full custody of the, of the three younger siblings was granted to my mother through a court decision. Since then, my mom did not receive any support, material nor emotional, from my father. For a while, <laughs> I got lost. My mother worked. My mother worked for long hours. I seem to have been lost. My sorry. My mother worked long hours every day to provide for the family, to start a new life for us five children and to ab avoid further trouble with my father. My mother accepted the offer of a family customer to relocate from Batangas to Montenlo. She did it with no penny in her pocket, but relied only on the kindness of the family. Our life in Montenlupa was likewise not easy. My mother would work almost 18 hours a day and we were left under the care of our two siblings, elder siblings. We moved from one rented shanty to another, to another due to inability to pay the cheap rent. At the age of eight, we were trained to contribute to the family's income through backyard hog fattening, raising chicken, selling hot pandisal during madaling araw making paper bags out of cement wrapper and other mean but decent works. Included in our early discipline was physical punishment from our half-sister for every little mistake and shortcoming. We cannot eat our meals unless we are done with our assigned tasks. My half-brother, on the other hand, may be due to lack of spiritual guidance, treated me not as sister, to be cared of, but an object of his desire. We were not allowed to play. Everything was work, study, and punishment. Nothing of these maltreatments were revealed to my mother because we love her so much and we didn't want to put additional burden on the already heavy cross on her shoulder. It was during this time of my childhood life that I started to do frequent visits visit to a nearby church on my way home from school. I would, stare, I would stare at the crucified Jesus and would pour out to him my, my pains, tiredness, and longings. It was with him also that I created my dreams and goals in life. Para siyang buhay na kaibigan na kinakausap ko, malimit sa isip, ngunit minsan pabulong, malimit ko siyang iyakan. The elder two siblings got married at young ages immediately after they got permanent jobs in a nearby factory. My half-sister continued to live with us as she, re as she required us to help take care of her nine children who were, who were born one year after another. And so, another task without pay. My half-brother separated from us and would only ask my help as Yaya to his kids during summer vacations. My brother and I graduated from elementary at the same time because he failed twice. Since my mother cannot send us both to high school, even in a government-owned one, 
my brother gave in for me. On my second year in high school, a relative informed, me, informed us that my father died. The three of us, together with my mother, went to Batangas, but failed to see his remains because he was buried a day before our arrival. Nasaktan ako ng sobra. Kasi, kahit hindi ko maunawaan, bakit natitis niya kaming hindi makita, mahal ko pa rin siya. At gusto ko siyang mayakap. For the first time in my childhood life, I asked God, Bakit ninyo ako binigo? Mahal ba ninyo ako? The hurt, the hurt did not stay long. Maybe because there was nothing to miss from my father. After my high school graduation, I did not pursue a college degree because my mother's health started to fail due to long hours of work during the past years. I applied in so many factories but was not taken in because I was so petite, four ten in height, thin and sickly looking. On my 18th birthday, I saw my mother cry. I saw my mother cried. There were no there were no delicious food on our table. Pritong toyo at matigas na sinangag. No glittering gown on me and no happy guest bearing gifts. It was a total contrast from the short stories and poems I have composed in the past. I would, I would, I wanted to give up and thought of putting an end to my life. Our Lord Jesus again saved me through a calendar that bears the image of the sacred heart that was hung on our wall. He reminded me of my mother's sacrifices, my two brothers who love me and look up at me to be their future hope. as well as all the three incidents wherein he miraculously saved me from being abused, two by my own relatives and a teenage boy in our neighborhood. At age 20, I got a permanent job in a thread-winding factory owned by a Japanese national. I pursued a degree in accountancy. On my second year in the company, Another good break came to me through a five stanza poem I composed out of my admiration of our Japanese employer. It was beautifully, beautifully printed, laminated, and given to him. As a reward, I was transferred to accounting department as a payroll clerk. All the benefits were given to me as a working student. Special office schedule, tuition fee loans, and lighter working load. During those four years of being a working student, the Lord again saved me that not just twice, but so many times from being molested and abused by misguided men. As I would go home from school, Manila to Montilupa, so late at night. I have experienced sleeping in bus terminals, often crowded with men, with streets, when streets were not possible due to flood. The Lord helped me pass three government qualifying examinations with so little effort, I couldn't even believe it myself. So professional, professional, and CPA board. As I look back through those difficult years in my life, I see only one mind, focused, analytical, and photographic. 
one heart, vulnerable to pains but trusting. Two hands and two feet, not so strong but reliant on the divine. And a will always submissive to God. Well, who else could have anchored me then? Only our Lord Jesus, my one and all. With my college degree and work experience, I moved from one company to another with mission to improve the life of my family. Always with the guidance of the Almighty. God lavished me with good remunerations and perks, which included foreign travels. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, childhood dreams come true. I helped, I helped some nieces, nephews, grandchildren of my brothers and sisters in their studies. Through God's provision and creativity, was able to provide the material, medical, and other needs of my siblings, of my siblings and their families, no matter how huge the amounts were. In 1989, God blessed me with my own family, with a husband who was not my personal choice, but that of my loved ones. He, is, he has always been God's co-cooperator in re realizing my dream for a complete and happy family. We have two kids, a girl who graduated from UP with a Bachelor of Science in Physical Therapy and is now based in the United States, and a son who graduated from the University of Santo Tomas with a BS degree in Occupational Therapy. And with a personal conviction of serving children with special needs in our country, rather than in foreign land. There were highs and lows in my married life, but I continued to trust God who molded me to be God-fearing, forgiving, humble, patient, persevering, but most of all, soft in heart but firm in divine disposition. I have expanded my gaze to my neighbors through serving them as a catechist. Dito ko po naranasan, wala pa po ang akong apo, pero ang dami pong batang nagmamano, yumayakap, at higit sa lahat, nakangiti na masayang masaya. Very fulfilling po. A member of the Legion of Mary, one who gives spiritual talks for the reception of sacraments, and a believer who always sees Jesus in the hearts of others. To be holy is not ours, but let us be fully reliant on Jesus to make us one. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, and I quote, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. The sixth last word of Jesus, it is finished, has been accomplished by Jesus in my life. What is expected of me, of me now is to make myself always ready and available to the, com to the commands of God. Let me end the prayer. Let me end the sharing with a prayer. Father of Jesus, our Father, for Jesus' sake, we pray that the child that owe and, Jesus, and trust Jesus exhibited on the cross would, be, would become ours also. We pray that we will trust you no matter what, knowing that in your good, strong hands we are eternally secure in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus points us to the Father so that we too can throw ourselves into his arms, surrendering to him, knowing he loves us and will not lead us astray. And when we place ourselves in God's arms, we'll share in the joy that Jesus felt upon his reunion with the Father. 
when we place ourselves in God's arms, we'll be close to Him and share in the joy that Jesus felt upon His reunion with the Father. The seventh reflection will be given by the steward of the parish finance council. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. The Gospel of the Lord. Mapagpala at mainit na hapon po sa inyong lahat. My full name is Ana Liliosa Santos. But here in ROLP, everybody simply calls me Ana. I am currently the Paris Finance Council steward for exactly six years and ten months. As the Finance steward, it is my role together with our parish priest and the parish finance council team to ensure that funds of the parish is used well, spent well for the right purpose. Aside from being with the finance council, I am also an active member of the ministry of lectors and commentators of ROLP for more than 20 years now. On top of that, in the year that was May 2010, with the prodding of Raul Castillo, I accepted the challenge to be the ROLP coordinator for the first ever automated historical election in the country, in first automation po. I am a mother of four adult children and a lola to an 11-year-old boy whom I have already brought here to Rolf, serving, he is currently serving, training as part of the Ministry of Altar Servers. It's Good Friday once again. And as Catholics, we remember the passion and death of Jesus on the cross during this Holy Week period, his betrayal, death, and resurrection. And then we celebrate Easter. This has been a recurring activity we do every year. Paulit-ulit lang. But after each Holy Week, was there anything that have changed in us? I'm looking at each and every one of you here. Ako rin ho, tinatanong ko yung sarili ko. It's a rhetorical question. No need to answer. Personally po, 
this Holy Week celebration, this year's Holy Week celebration, was made even more meaningful for me. Ma share ko lang ho, God gave me the privilege of going to Holy Land for the first time last year. And I was able to traverse and walk on all the paths that Jesus have gone through from the time he was born in Bethlehem to the cross in Calvary. Meaningful po ang Holy Week ngayon sa akin kasi na, nalakaran ko po lahat yung nilakaran ni Jesus eh. And it was even made more meaningful and memorable when God gave me the courage and strength to climb Mount Sinai, the place where he handed to Moses the Ten Commandments. Hindi po biru yon. Right, Tino and Steve? <laughs> Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The last words that Jesus uttered to his Father, na kahit na nung mga huling sandali, that he was about to breathe his last, he called on the Father to surrender his trust, to surrender everything to him, even the, in the face of extreme suffering and death. In this modern times where we are all preoccupied and distracted with all the material things of this world, we oftentimes forget the sacrifices that Jesus have done to save us all. Jesus dying on the cross. Almost four decades ago, exactly 38 years ago, I was hired by one of the top financial institutions in the country as a new accounts clerk. Yung po yung starting entry. And I was assigned to several other functions in that bank. No need to mention the bank. I have my dreams, and I don't think I will settle for anything less. And so in a span of three years, I was recommended to attend and be part of the officer's training program of the said bank, which I passed with flying colors. But my dream does not simply end there. I struggled to even climb up the corporate ladder. I worked so hard, but you know how it is in corporate. If you don't know how to dance to their tune, Mapapag-iwanan ka. And I'm not an ASCII, sir. Or in layman's word, hindi po ako sip-sip. I was also not as gutsy as I am now during that time. Ngayon po, alam ko yung mga nakakakilala sa akin. Alam nyo po na most of the events, activities of the parish, ako po yung nag-organize, nag spearhead I'm, you see me everywhere. I multitask a lot. I belong to the baby boomers generation. Compute, compute. Ilang taon na ako ngayon. Though we are competitive and goal-oriented, we value relationships, and so I stick to that principle working for the said financial institution. Then, we were not so much inclined to material things compared to the present generations that we have now. The millennials, the Gen Z, and yung pinaka-latest, the Gen Alpha. They were born to be digital and social media savvy, where all informations are just at the tip of their fingers. Noon, wala kaming Facebook. Walang Instagram, walang Twitter. And yung famous ngayon, wala kaming TikTok. Nung time na yon. 
It's simply sipag at syaga lang at maraming maraming dasal. These struggles of mine brought me to where I am now. I stayed focused and prayed so hard that my time will come. Tanong, was I able to achieve my goal? Opo. Because of all those struggles of mine, I'm not now part of the senior management of the bank. But behind all those success and accolades that I have reaped, malungkot din po yung puso ko. Years 2019 and 2020 were years that will be forever ink in my heart. I lost my beloved mom in 2019 and my dad followed a year after. Looking back, I always find so much regret in my heart for not being able, for not being on my mom's side during her last remaining days. Asan ako? I was busy with work. I was busy with so many events. I was busy with Rotary. And sabi ko sa sarili ko, oh, may caregiver naman mami ko eh. So, umuwi lang po ako ng Batangas on weekends, spend the weekend with her. Pero alam nyo ho, up to this time, paradi ko pa rin hong sinasabi sa sarili ko na sana ako ang nag-alaga sa mami ko bago siya namatay. Hanggang ngayon po, nire-regret ko po yun. And then my dad followed a year after. And then COVID came. COVID taught us so many life lessons. It gave equality on the rich and the poor. No amount of money then saved rich people from dying. The pandemic was an equalizer on the social status of each and every Filipino. A realization for each one of us to share and give back, especially if we really have the means to give and share. I'm not referring to money, hindi lang po pera ang focus ko dito. We can help others in some other ways sharing our resources. It can be our time, talents, which can change the life of another. Ito po paulit-ulit na sinasabi ni Monsi kahapon pa at kanina. It's sharing our gift of time, talent, and other resources. Being generous is an important virtue that Jesus have demonstrated when he died for us on the cross. I personally attest to the saying that whenever we give, it comes back a thousandfold, hindi lang hundredfold. And sometimes, it's even better pa nga than what we have given. Ako ho, I have so many personal experiences and testimonies on this. Simpleng, if I give a hundred, ang bumabalik sa akin, times ten, one thousand. Jo lang joke ho. God has given us all human beings a gift of time, talent, and other resources, and treasures that we can use for this purpose. And for every gift we receive from God, we should exercise our being good stewards of these gifts. We should use it to help and serve one another. Not just in the community we belong and serve, helping and sharing has no limits. It has no boundaries. As a church servant, a finance steward of this parish, as a banker, an active Rotarian, I take it upon myself to share my blessings. Sana po kayo din. To voluntarily give 
and to do service above self. That's our rotary motto. As I move into a milestone in my life, I find it imperative upon myself to practice the virtue of giving. As in the prayer of St. Francis says, allow me to sing a few lines from the song. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal love. End of song. Jesus died for all of us on the cross. And as he uttered the last words, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. I now lift up everything to God as I continue my life's journey. And for God to make me an instrument of his love for mankind. Time for me. Time for all of us to give back everything that God has given us. As we all journey through Lent, may we all reflect on our blessings, seek forgiveness for our shortcomings, and renew our commitment of living a life of love, compassion, and service to others. Let us all walk this path together with humility and grace crashing in God's guidance and strength. Amen. Prayer Lord God, with Jesus' work finished, accomplished, completed on the cross, what is left for us but to give ourselves in gratitude to you? And so we give ourselves to you, Lord, body, and soul all that we are, all that we have, as a living sacrifice of praise. Into your hands, we commit our spirits and our lives. Receive us, accept this suffering, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The life of a Christian steward models the life of Jesus. It is challenging and even difficult in many respects, yet intense joy comes to those who take the risk to live as Christian stewards. Women and men who seek to live as stewards learn that all things work for good for those who love God. After Jesus, we look to Mary as an ideal steward. As the mother of Christ, she lived her ministry in a spirit of fidelity and service. She responded generously to the call. We must ask ourselves, do we also wish to be disciples of Jesus Christ and Christian stewards of our world and our church? Central to our human and Christian vocations, as well as to the unique vocation each of us receives from God, is that we be good stewards of the gifts we possess. God gives us this divine and human worship, this world and church of ours. The Spirit shows us the way. Stewardship is a part of that journey. And so I now ask you, dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> 
allow me to lead you in prayer. Lifting up to God our humble stewardship prayer. Please kneel. <clears throat> Prayer to be generous stewards. Almighty God, from the beginning of creation, you have filled the world with your abundant blessings. May we never cease to thank you. Lord Jesus, you came to teach us how to love one another and how to be good stewards of your many gifts. You gave us new values by which to measure our lives. It is only by generously sharing ourselves and our God-given talents and gifts that we find true joy and peace. Help us to be a blessing for those we serve. Open our hearts so that we may feel the needs of our brothers and sisters. May all of our activities continue to build God's kingdom here on earth. Holy Spirit, give us your wisdom. Empower us with your gifts and graces. Continue to guide us so that we can be an inspiration for all people to use their gifts, great and small alike, to bring your peace and blessings to the world. May our efforts help to increase love in our community and make an impact now and in future generations. When we have given all we have in your name, may we rejoice in the riches stored for us in heaven, which overflows with the goodness of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May I now invite you to spend these moments of silent prayer as we prepare for the veneration of the cross and commemoration of the passion and death of our Lord.
cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video nếu thấy hay hãy nhấn like đăng ký kênh và comment để ủng hộ chúng mình nhé